What makes GPT-3 and DALI powerful is exactly the same thing, data. Data is crucial in our field and our models are extremely data hungry. These large models, either language models for GPT or image models for DALI, all require the same thing, way too much data. Unfortunately, the more data you have, the better it is. So you need to scale up those models, especially for real-world applications. Bigger models can use bigger datasets to improve only if the data is of high quality. Feeding images that do not represent the real world will be of no use and even worsen the model's ability to generalize. This is where data-centric AI comes into play. Data-centric AI, also referred to as Software 2.0, is just a fancy way of saying that we optimize our data to maximize the model's performances instead of model-centric, where you will just tweak the model's parameters on a fixed dataset. Of course, both need to be done to have the best results possible, but data is by far the bigger player here. In this video, in partnership with Snorkel, I will cover what data-centric AI is and review some big advancements in the field. You will quickly understand why data is so important in machine learning, which is Snorkel's mission. Taking a quote from their blog post linked below, teams will often spend time writing new models instead of understanding their problem and its expression in data more deeply. Writing a new model is a beautiful refuge to hide from the mess of understanding the real problems. And this is what this video aims to combat. In one sentence, the goal of data-centric AI is to encode knowledge from our data into the model by maximizing the data's quality and model's performance. It all started in 2016 at Stanford with a paper called Data Programming, creating large training sets quickly, introducing a paradigm for labeling training datasets programmatically rather than by hand. This was an eternity ago in terms of AI research age. As you know, the best approaches to date use supervised learning, a process in which models train on data and labels and learn to reproduce the labels when given the data. For example, you'd feed a model many images of dogs and cats with their respective labels and ask the model to find out what is in the picture. Then, use backpropagation to train the model based on how well it succeeds. If you are unfamiliar with backpropagation, I invite you to pause the video to watch my one minute explanation and return where you left off. As datasets are getting bigger and bigger, it becomes increasingly difficult to curate them and remove hurtful data to allow for the model to focus on only relevant data. You don't want to train your model to detect a cat when it's a skunk. It could end badly. When I refer to data, keep in mind that it can be any sort of data, tabular, images, text, videos, etc. Now that you can easily download a model for any task, the shift to data improvement and optimization is inevitable. Model availability, the scale of recent datasets, and the data dependency these models have are why such a paradigm for labeling training datasets programmatically becomes essential. Now, the main problem comes with having labels for our data. It's easy to have thousands of images of cats and dogs, but it's much harder to know which images have a dog and which images have a cat, and even harder to have their exact locations in the image for segmentation tasks, for example. The first paper introduces a data programming framework where the user, either ML engineer or data scientist, expresses weak supervision strategies as labeling functions using a generative models that labels subsets of the data and found that data programming may be an easier way for non-experts to create machine learning models when training data is limited or unavailable. In short, they show how improving data without much additional work while keeping the model the same improve results, which is a now evident but essential stepping stone. It's a really interesting foundation paper in this field and worth the read. The second paper we cover here is called Snorkel, Rapid Training Data Creation with Weak Supervision. This paper, published a year later, also from Stanford University, presents a flexible interface layer to write labeling functions based on experience, continuing on the idea that training data is increasingly large and difficult to label. Causing a bottleneck in models' performances, they introduce Snorkel, a system that implements the previous paper in an end-to-end -end system. This system allowed knowledge experts, the people that best understand the data, to easily define labeling functions to automatically label data, instead of doing hand annotation, building models up to 2.8 times faster while also increasing predictive performance by an average of 45.5%. 
So again, instead of writing labels, the users or knowledge experts write labeling functions. These functions simply give insights to the models on patterns to look for or anything the expert will use to classify the data, helping the model follow the same process. Then, the system applies the newly written labeling functions over our unlabeled data and learns a generative model to combine the output labels into probabilistic labels which are then used to train our final deep neural network. Snorkel does all this by itself, facilitating this whole process for the first time. Our last paper, also from Stanford, another year later, introduces Software 2.0. This one-page paper is once again pushing forward with the same deep learning data-centric approach using labeling functions to produce training labels for large unlabeled datasets and train our final model, which is particularly useful for huge internet scraped datasets like the one used in Google applications such as Google Ads, Gmail, YouTube, etc tackling the lack of hand-labeled data. Of course, this is just an overview of the progress and direction of data-centric AI, and I strongly invite you to read the information in the description below to have a complete view of data-centric AI, where it comes from, and where it's heading. I also want to thank Snorkel for sponsoring this video, and I invite you to check out their website for more information. If you haven't heard of Snorkel before, you've still already used their approach in many products like YouTube, Google Ads, Gmail, and other big applications. Thank you for watching the video until the end.